what I just wanted to share is um, uh, I was just kind of going through, uh, you know, we were talking about some of the educational things that we have um, available um, to us. And maybe, you know, it's a good idea right now to spend some time on that. So uh, about 10 years ago, uh, Bill, Bill O'Neill decided, hey, you know what, let's, let's kind of do a series of, of stocks. Uh, this is kind of like the model book, uh, really, in a way. Uh, keep in mind, the model book was something that he had started decades and decades ago, where he was looking at what the characteristics were of these big winners. And um, a lot of times what he would do in these model books is he would go through and he would mark them up. It would do, do like a post analysis to kind of just really dig deep into what it was about these stocks that worked. Um, and so since we were talking a lot about the, the healthcare area, the medical, the biomed, biotech, I thought it might be interesting to just take a look at one of these old articles um, that Bill wrote. And again, he was doing this every Wednesday. So uh, he, he would, you know, write it up. Um, I would, I would pull out a chart for him. He would mark it up. Then I would type all of these notes up, but I thought it might be a little interesting to just kind of point out some of the things that Bill would typically do with this series. And one of the first things you'll notice is for, for pretty much all of these charts, he would mark where the follow through day was. Um, so this is your S and P 500 index. And he would have me go back and say, okay, tell me where all these follow through days were. Um, because he wanted to know exactly where they were in relation to the chart. Um, and the other thing that Bill would do is he really would do a lot of week by week analysis. So in, in looking at this, this cup with handle, you know, he'd, he'd identify the pattern. Um, you know, he'd look at support weeks. This is a good example right here of a support week um, where you see it came down strong, but it closed off of its lows in the upper part of its range, um, very heavy volume. Um, and so he was trying to point out these very key areas. Um, we were recently talking about the Livermore uh, shakeout plus three rule. So this is an example right here where he said, okay, look, you had this shakeout right here. So this is a buy at $28 using Livermore shakeout plus three rule. When the stock undercut the low of 25, recovers by three points. So um, or you can buy at 27 when Biogen goes above prior week's high and volume increases as stock goes above 10 week moving average line. So uh, again, he was just always doing a lot of this analysis, this post analysis to try and get better and better. And this is when he was already at this for decades and decades and arguably was already pretty good. Uh, you know, so he was still always, you know, pointing these things out. Um, and then he also would be looking at those sell signals. You know, uh, of course, one of the big ones closes below the 10 week moving average line. So you got, you got that here. Now you had that in a few cases here before, but in a lot of times, um, look at how it, it closed on those breaches of the 10 week line before. Like here, it didn't close below it. Here, it closed like right at the line on this day, had a few weeks below it, but it was basing um, and so maybe you had gotten out of it here. Um, and, and again, it was, it, was, it was interesting because this closed right at it and then it closed down, but I mean, it went down and then closed right at the line again, then had a few weeks down uh, below it and then you're, you're forming a base. So if you had gotten out of it because that 10 week moving average line, you got a chance to get right back into it uh, shortly shortly after. Um, but then he also mentioned in this base right here that he thought it was late stage, wide and loose. And he pointed out week by week, just look at the weeks one, two, four, five, six, eight, 12, 14, and 17 were negative price and volume weeks. He was always doing this week by week analysis and looking at the volume in relation to what the price was doing. So um, in fact, a lot of times he would have, hey, what's the red and blue count? Um, how many red weeks were there on heavier volume than the prior week or heavier than average volume and how many blue weeks were there in that relation. And with those, where do they close? So, um, you know, and, and, and I think there was just a lot of this information that he would put out there. Um, you also, uh, you know, for people that are like, oh my, man, this is great and I wanna see more of this, keep in mind in how to make money in stocks, the fourth edition, you get either the orange or the green book and those first 100 charts in the first chapter, 
uh, a lot of a lot of these details are in a lot of those uh, chart markups as well. In fact, a lot of times we used some of those. Uh, it was just another way for Bill to expose people to uh, a lot of this chart analysis that he had, had done. So, um, and then also for each of these, he also wanted to make sure that it was understood, hey, there's a fundamental story here as well. It's not just about the technical action. He talked about how a lot of times healthcare does provide some of the best names cycle after cycle after cycle. Uh, and he also said, look, this was one where it had a lot of opportunities for you. There were multiple bases. If you missed one, it gave you an opportunity later. And then if you missed those, it gave you another opportunity later. So multiple chances to get in. So don't feel like you have to chase something like it'll never, it'll never give you another chance. And it's just always going to go up without you. Uh, that's one of the things that helped me a lot because early on, one of my biggest problems was I was buying stocks extended. I had major FOMO in my early 20s, and uh, especially because I started in the late 90s where there was, it just seemed like everything was going up. And if I just didn't buy, uh, I was going to miss the whole thing. So that was something I really had to train myself to, um, I guess, squash that, that, that emotion in myself uh, and, and really go back to, hey, uh, and especially I think right now, because this market is so unforgiving, I think you have to be a little bit more precise with your buy points, not chase things. That's why I'm very hesitant to be buying something that looks extended in any way, uh, even if it's coming up to a buy point. But if it's been up 10, 20, 30% in the last couple of weeks, I'm going to want it to settle down because I don't want to be buying something extended. I don't want to be buying something where it's 50% above its 50-day moving average line. Um, I, I want to see something settle down and, and give me a nice entry so that I can be a little bit more precise with my pivots. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.